Hello everyone, welcome back to the Hentevi Minute series on whole blood resuscitation and EMS. In our previous episode, we delved into the transformative power of whole blood use in the pre-hospital setting. Today, in part two, we're gonna turn that focus towards operationalizing whole blood. Let's dive in. Firstly, we'll need to consider the essential equipment required to handle whole blood. Paramount among these is high quality refrigeration system to maintain the blood's temperature and lifespan. For transport, you'll need a specialized cooler to ensure stable temperature conditions. We recommend the Credo cooler. However, there are other innovative devices coming to the market, like this portable refrigeration unit you see here. One indispensable piece of equipment is the Q&Flow warmer, an innovative device we've been using to efficiently bring the stored blood to body temperature before transfusion. The LifeFlow device is another key component facilitating rapid and controlled whole blood delivery in emergencies with compatible tubing that ensures smooth transfusions. Remote temperature monitoring provides an additional level of assurance that blood is always stored and transported under optimal conditions. The next step is comprehensive initial training, which ensures that best practices for handling, storing, and administering whole blood are well understood and strictly adhered to. This rollout training should be interactive, allowing trainees to gain practical, hands-on experience. I'd strongly recommend contacting the Southwest Texas Regional Advisory Council, the STRAC, who have been holding a conference twice a year on how to start a whole blood program. Their email is here on the screen, so please reach out to Dr. Winkler and his team. But it doesn't stop there. Continuous quality improvement, CQI, is critical in maintaining a high standard of care. I'd recommend that your team review every case and look for key findings such as vital signs before and after blood administration. Be sure to include a measurement of the shock index, which is simply the heart rate divided by the systolic blood pressure. Time to administration is also a key measure to look at. Regular ongoing training sessions will keep your personnel updated on the latest techniques best practices and technologies. Now, an equally important facet of operationalizing whole blood is data collection. A blood registry has been initiated by Dr. Juan Duchesne at the Tulane University, and it's open to any EMS organization and their trauma center to participate. This registry will enable us to gather extensive data and gain a comprehensive understanding of whole blood's impact across the U.S. This approach aligns perfectly with our mantra of measure and improve. Now, there are some significant challenges to implementing whole blood usage in EMS. Cost and reimbursement issues, short blood supply, reluctance from hospitals, and blood banks due to logistical challenges. All these barriers require strategic solutions and close cooperations across the entire healthcare system. One such solution is a hospital partnership or an exchange program. Unused whole blood can be returned to the hospital before its expiration date, thus maximizing the utility of this invaluable resource. Let's take a moment to acknowledge the importance of gathering the key stakeholders as you begin this process. Here in our state, we started the Florida Whole Blood Coalition, a collaborative initiative that is leading the charge in improving the pre-hospital use of whole blood by pooling resources and sharing knowledge. Now, as you watch this, you'll see a QR code appearing on your screen. Please scan it to watch the inaugural Florida Blood Coalition webinar that we posted on YouTube. Lastly, community blood drives play a crucial role in increasing the blood supply, making it more accessible for EMS use. Beyond just boosting the supply, these events raise awareness and build public support for this important cause. So in conclusion, while the road to adopting whole blood and EMS has its challenges, it can truly revolutionize emergency care. Strategic planning, ongoing training, partnerships, and community involvement are all essential. In our next episode, I'll delve into protocols, implementation, and the specifics of pediatric and adult care. Until then, remember each of us plays a vital role in this journey, and together we can save lives. Thank you for tuning in.